This is Rich Bracey of Race A1 Septic, and I'm here to give you a review of how your residential sewage treatment plant works, and then to show you the measurable parameters to be aware of in keeping your plant working properly. Finally, I will give you a brief summary of how you can utilize our septic system alarms as a 24-7 tool to warn you the moment something is wrong. And with our wireless alarm option, you will even have the audible warnings inside your home. So let's get started. What you see before you is a top and side view of a typical 500 gallon per day residential treatment plant. As you see, it is a rectangular box that is four feet wide by about eight feet long and five feet deep. It usually has two chambers, but may have three or four. Now let's follow the path of the liquid waste. At the far left of our drawing, you will see the liquid sewage in blue, which has just left the house through a four inch drain pipe. You will note the stand up T sticking up above the ground. This is called the clean out and is used as an inspection port to see if there's a clog in the drain line and also as the entrance for jetting or roto-rooting your drain line to the treatment plant or back towards the house. The sewage travels into the treatment plant's first chamber via gravity. You will see that the normal liquid level in the tank is only about a foot below the bottom of the tank top. This level is maintained constant as the second chamber to the right has the outlet pipe set at just that level. This means that for any amount of liquid sewage that drains from your house, an equal amount of liquid, hopefully cleaner, is exiting your treatment plant, thus maintaining a constant level in the tank. And this normally is from 750 to 1,000 gallons. Now, as the sewage enters the first chamber, it is mixed and aerated by the air coming from the aeration pipe at the bottom of the tank. It is usually a half inch to one and a quarter PVC pipe with quarter inch holes to release the air or by a ceramic or pumice diffuser. The air itself comes from a linear diaphragm air pump usually plugged in at the side of the house as in this case. The sewage is aerated so that the bacteria called aerobic bacteria that utilize air to break down solid waste can do their work. The aerated liquid waste then passes underneath the division baffle opening to the clarifying chamber where more of the fine solids settle out. Finally, as more sewage enters the first chamber from the house, the treated liquid waste is forced out over the overflow of the second chamber. In most cases, the four inch drain pipe at the exit of the second chamber passes by gravity straight to a common drain line or to a field bed underground. When there is not enough fall from the tank to drain by gravity, another small tank is installed as it's shown. It is about 30 to 60 gallons and is called a lift station. A sump pump pictured here in green is set at the bottom of the tank. The sump pump is equipped with a float switch that automatically turns on the sump pump to pump the water out by force when a determined liquid level is reached. The normal high and low level maintained by the sump pump is indicated here by a red diagonal line between the two blue lines. So now the question, what parameters do we need to keep an eye on to ensure the septic system described is working properly? The answer is proper airflow to the aeration chamber and a constant liquid level maintained in the treatment plant and or the lift station. Let's first discuss what problems can arise in the aeration system and how to monitor them. The aeration system begins at the air pump. Air pumps are rated and built for a continuous working pressure of 2.13 pounds per square inch or PSI. This is basically the weight of the liquid waste that is present against the bubbling diffuser at the bottom of the tank. 4.3 to 4.6 feet below the liquid surface. In actual practice, we have measured this pressure, which is called back pressure, to be from 1.5 to 2.3 PSI in a clear and unobstructed air system. The linear diaphragm air pumps are built to run continuously at up to 3 PSI, but they will run hot and the service life will be greatly reduced. 
So why is there this increase in detrimental back pressure in some septic air systems? The first reason is because of a pinch or break in the line that completely or partially blocks the passage of air. This usually occurs here where the PVC air line goes vertically underground and bends horizontally towards the treatment plant. It is often a result of poor installation or more usually from hitting the air line at the point just above ground with such as a lawnmower. Another place that the blockage may occur is here where the air lines 90s into the tank. Again, it is usually from a lawnmower strike or because of poor installation. The last and most common cause of airline obstruction is found at the bottom of the tank where the air bubbles into the water via small holes or by pumice or ceramic diffusers. This obstruction is always caused here by septic sludge on the bottom of the tank that little by little over time obstructs the amount of air leaving the diffuser. And at some point the obstruction will cause a rapid failure of your expensive air pump. So then, it becomes very important to monitor the air pressure in the line at all times and to sound an alarm if and when high pressure is found. Our high pressure system alarm does this by using an air pressure takeoff either from a port at your air pump or as shown here from the airline itself. The air passes through a 1 8 inch diameter vinyl tube and to our alarm. If the pressure becomes too high, a red light and siren will sound at the box. If you have a wireless alarm, a lighted siren will warn you inside your home as well. The second airline parameter to monitor is when the pressure is too low. Naturally, when it is too low, there is no aeration to the treatment plant and the whole aerobic system fails to work. In this case, your system will still break down solid waste, but with a different bacteria in a dirtier process that gives off both hydrogen sulfide, which is smelly egg gas, and methane. There are two causes for the low pressure. Either your pump has failed or because of a break in the line at the same places and for the same reasons as discussed above for high pressure considerations. Fortunately, this parameter is easily monitored with the same air pressure takeoff line used for monitoring high air pressure. You will see here that when activated, our alarm will be a yellow light and siren. With wireless option, an alarm will also sound off in your house. Now that we have the problem of proper aeration taken care of, let's talk about the second major septic system parameter to keep our eye on, which is maintaining the correct liquid waste level in your treatment plant and or lift station, as we have discussed before. As we saw above, normally, Liquid waste level in your septic system is maintained constant by an overflow drain pipe at the exit end of your treatment plant. But what happens if the liquid level rises up to the top of the tank or lift station or both? Well, this means that either your four inch line exiting your tank to the field bed or a straight drain pipe to the drainage ditch is clogged. Or if you have a lift station as shown here, it will indicate that the sump pump has failed. The end result of each failure is that all of the drains in your home will begin to stop up and overflow. If your house is not on a slab, at the very least, you will begin to have sewage leaking out over the ground above your treatment plant. This is something that can happen very quickly, and so it is of the utmost importance to know at the very earliest of the failure of your drainage system. We can monitor the liquid level and be warned immediately of failures of the drain line to the field bed or ditch, and in the case of the lift station, all with our float switch alarm. This is how it works. First, let's take the case of monitoring the liquid level of the sewage treatment plant without the lift station. The easiest way to insert the float switch is to open the six inch inspection port and insert a float switch with a counterweight incorporated as you see here. The weighted line is let down in the liquid level until the float begins to stand on end and switch on. At this point, the height of the cable is marked with a reference point on the six inch inspection pipe. Then the cable of the float is lifted all the way out of the waste liquid so that the switch in the float will reset to the opposition. Last, the float is let down the inspection pipe and into the water. 
but this time about four inches higher than the marked reference point marked previously. The float cable is securely fastened at that point to the pipe. The float alarm is now set to switch on when the liquid level in the tank has risen four inches above the normal level. And it will switch the alarm on at the control box with a green light and siren. And since this is a parameter that is urgent to know at the moment it happens, all of our liquid level alarms are wireless and will set off a siren inside your house as well. If you have a lift station, as seen here on the right, you have a sump pump with its float switch incorporated in the pump. It turns the pump on and off as the liquid level reaches its set minimum and maximum liquid levels. These fixed levels are shown here as two blue lines with the diagonal red lines marked between them. The upper blue line is when the sump pump turns on and remains on until the liquid level reaches the blue line at the bottom. If the liquid level ever gets above the upper blue line, this means the sump pump has stopped working, either due to pump failure or a popped circuit breaker where the pump is plugged in. To monitor this with our alarm, the float switch cable is tie wrapped to the PVC discharge pipe as shown so that the yellow float will switch on at any liquid level above the normal range set by the sump pump. Next, the wireless high liquid level alarm is plugged into the same outlet as a sump pump. However, instead of plugging the sump pump cord directly into the plug receptacle, it will be plugged into a GFI cable plug shown here in yellow. The other end of the GFI cable will then plug into the electrical receptacle. In this way, even if the sump pump burns out and pops a breaker, it will merely be the GFI cable breaker instead of the fixed receptacle breaker where the alarm is plugged into, thus ensuring that whatever be the cause of the high liquid level, the alarm will warn you inside your house at that very instant. Well, now we have covered residential septic 101. I hope this information will be helpful to you in deciding which of our septic system monitoring alarms is best for you. See you later.